Hi there, welcome back. In previous videos we've looked at the Nikon picture controls that are provided in the Z series and some of Nikon's DSLRs. These are probably the closest thing you've got in Nikon cameras to um, filters in your smartphone or filters in Instagram. Um, Nikon provide a series of scene specific type filters and also 20 creative filters and they range from quite subtle to quite creative end of the spectrum. Also I mentioned in the video where we took a quick look through all of the different um, filters that you do have the possibility to customize the filters for your own use and your own style. And in this video we're going to take a look at how you go about that both in camera and also using a, an app that Nikon provide for your computer. So let's start with how you go about looking so let's start with how you go about customizing the picture controls in the camera. So if we come into the menu system when we go into the photo shooting menu and we scroll down to set picture control, within set picture control you'll remember there are all of the pre-installed um, picture control settings. And there are nine spaces in the camera for customized picture controls. And then you can save a further 99 to the card you're using, your XQD card in the Z series. So if we go into um, set picture control, that allows us to pick a picture control. But if we go one stop down on the menu system to manage picture control, this is where we have the option to save and edit a picture control, rename, delete, and load and save a picture control to and from the card. So let's start by looking at how I go about setting up picture control in camera. I come down to the manage picture control and go into save edit and from there you can choose the base picture control um, that you're going to use to then adapt to what you want. So I'd pick the one closest to what you're trying to achieve so if you're looking for a monochrome um, to create a monochrome pitch control, I'd start from monochrome if you're going to start, if you're looking to create um, perhaps a vivid uh, pitch control, I'd start from the vivid one. So let's start from vivid and as you'll see it takes you into a whole um, list of settings that you can adjust for the in-camera processing. So rather than run through all of the individual settings in camera where it's difficult to see the effects they have, we'll perhaps touch on each of them when we look at the desktop application. But what you do is you run through the various um, settings here, adjusting them to how you want um, the camera to process each image, and then you hit OK. It will then take you out to um, the nine custom picture control settings and you can choose one of them to save it in, create a name for your new picture control and hit OK. And that's then saved your customized picture control in camera. As I said, what you can then do is either rename it, you can delete it in camera, or you can save it out to the card, in which case you can then take it into your computer to look at how the effect works on a slightly larger screen. So that's the in-camera approach. It's relatively straightforward, but it's quite difficult to do because you can't see the effect of what you're adjusting in camera without taking a picture each time, seeing whether it looks good on what is quite a small screen. Um, so seeing the actual sharpness differences is quite difficult. So it's not the way I tend to do it. If I was gonna do it, I'd be looking at using perhaps the desktop app in order to see how the effect is um, working on a particular image. So let's have a look at the desktop app. Okay, so let's take a look at the software that Nikon provides to help us create picture controls in a computer. Um, it's called Nikon Picture Controls Utility 2 and it can be found on the Nikon website if you go into customer support, look for um, the download area and if you enter your particular um, make, uh, your particular type of DSLR or mirrorless camera, what you'll find in the software tab is if your camera supports picture controls, there is the option to download Nikon Picture Control Utility 2. Once you've downloaded it and installed it on your computer, um, you can open it up and what you'll see is what I've got in front of me here. 
Um, you'll see that it's got a lot of the controls that you've got in camera, but whereas I find creating pitch controls in camera quite fiddly because you've got a small screen, you've got um, buttons um, which make it quite difficult to um, adjust and then see the impact of the changes. This makes it a lot easier and actually I didn't have to go out and take pictures of each of the different um, picture controls because as you'll see down the side here we've got all of the different um, picture controls and we can see the impact on the image that's on the screen. So the first thing you've got to do when you come into um, Nikon Picture Control Utility 2 is go to this box up on the top left called Product. Um, it'll probably be empty and you have to add your camera or cameras. You'll see there's all the options for all of the DSLRs that support picture controls um, and then also mirrorless um, Coolpix cameras and the software such as Capture NXD and View NXI that Nikon makes that also support picture controls. So you add your particular camera or cameras, click OK, and then you'll have the option to select them up here. And what that does is tell the, tell the software how you want to export and import picture controls, which format you want to use. So down the left hand side you can see there's a list of all of the picture controls that are installed on your particular camera, um, all of the creative ones and then I've obviously created my own customized one down here um, and that appears there. And you've got some buttons for importing, exporting um, to a memory card and then deleting them. If we come across the top what you'll see um, when you open it is probably this panel here we can click on preview and it drops down um, to give some more options. But if we go across the top here first, you can choose to turn off and on the um, impact of the picture controls. You can add a histogram over on the right hand side here. And we've got the option to zoom in to the image on the screen. Below that, we've got the option to compare before and after in horizontal, vertical, or just have a single, um, a single image on the screen, or blow it up to full screen, and rotate the image uh, clockwise and anti-clockwise. Over here, we've got the option to adjust the preview. So if we click on that, we can add in some exposure compensation um, to see, you know, so we can view the impact in different ways. And you can choose to take it back to zero. You can adjust the white balance, um, adjust, there's a fine adjustment in terms of white balance and the tint. And then what's quite interesting is you can also test the impact of different delighting, active delighting settings on the image. So if we wanted to use um, active delighting normal, we could see that had a, an impact there on the image. So you can choose what you include there and then you click OK. Equally, as I said, you can choose to change the image. So let's go in and I'll um, find a, an image. So this is an image you'll probably recognize from my Japanese, uh, one of my Japanese videos um, of some gentlemen in a workshop just outside um, the fish market in central Tokyo. Um, now what we have down the right hand side are the adjustments um, and if you open up manual adjustments so you've got adjustment sharpness on this one and manual adjustments. Now the adjustments you see down the right hand side are relevant, are, are changed depending on the, um, the picture control that you set. So for example in monochrome You'll see down the bottom here, we've got the filter effects appear and the toning effects. So if you want to turn it into sepia, if we chose portrait, um, we have a different set um, from auto. So it is um, picture control um, specific. If we then come down to the bottom, we've got some buttons for resetting a picture control, adding a picture control to the list as a custom um, picture control and then overwriting and then across the bottom and then across the bottom we've got the option to save um, the picture control to a card so if you want to transfer a custom picture control from here 
from the from the computer to your camera, you will need a card reader, either an SD card reader or a um, an XQD card reader, depending on your camera, so that you can save the picture control to the card and then import it from the card into your camera. You can also save it as a file on your computer and you can export the picture control to the Nikon software for um, video uh, for picture editing also. So that's the um, settings you've got on the screen. So there's quite a lot of different settings there, quite useful. Um, if we look at creating a, um, a new um, custom picture control, um, what we can do is we can we have to choose our base um, in base picture control. So I'm going to perhaps use monochrome for this one. And then on the right hand side, what we can do is we can go through and we can make adjustments. So they're the same settings as in your camera. I said I'd cover them later when we looked in camera. So what we've got here is a quick sharp at the top and you can choose to set that to auto. But what this does is if you move it across to the right, it adds sharpening. If you move it across to the left, it softens the image. But what you'll see is when I move it across, it moves all of the sharpening, the mid-range sharpening and the clarity across. So it's a good way to get a, perhaps a coarse adjustment, um, a rough adjustment to your image to get the right amount of sharpening you want. And then you can go in and use um, the different sharpening um, options below. So the sharpening um, slider will adjust the detail um, sharpening in the camera, in the um, picture control rather, um, in the detail. Mid-range sharpening can be quite useful if you're doing portraits um, because what that will focus on is the mid-tones, so particularly skin tones. So what I find is in a portrait, and we'll perhaps have a look at one in a second, you can sharpen, use the sharpening to sharpen things like the details, like the hair, the eyelashes, the eyes, and then you can perhaps soften the, um, the skin tones so that those don't look too harsh. And that's particularly useful with some of the Z mount lenses in the mirrorless range where they are particularly sharp lenses. So it will help you create a more flattering portrait in camera. And then you've got clarity, which is quite good for making adjustments. Now, clarity is different from contrast in that, whereas contrast will adjust the whole dynamic range, so it will affect the highlights and the shadows. Clarity is a little bit more um, subtle in that it doesn't affect the dynamic range. It doesn't push the highlights higher and the, the shadows lower. It, it adjusts within the dynamic range that's been captured. So we've then got contrast, and again, you can choose to have auto there. And you can see that that's making um, a bit of a change there in this image. Um, and then you can change brightness. So you can tweak that. What's quite powerful when it comes to really creating some um, custom um, pitch controls is the custom curve. And down the bottom here, you can um, adjust the curve so if you wanted a slightly flatter image you can move it up at the bottom it's the same as you would would adjust perhaps in Lightroom um, where small adjustments can have a big effect or well, you can turn it off and go back to what it was and you've got a gamma slider across the bottom and then as I said you've got the option to add different um, effects filter effects for your black and white so you can change to perhaps sepia and you can adjust the saturation of that particular filter so if you wanted a softer sepia you can adjust that so what we'd then do if that was our new um, custom setting we go down to add to list we get the option to add i'll call it adrian's mono and you can add a comment and you go okay and what you'll see is it appears over here in the um, left hand column and then you can either save it to um, your um, computer or you can output it to a card and I've got a card already plugged in um, so it's saved it to the card which I can then move to my camera and then use load in the options I showed you earlier um, to load that pitch control into my camera. So 
as you can see, it's quite simple to create um, custom picture controls. Perhaps easier using the, this, this piece of software than in, in camera. So let's change the image and let's have a quick look at a portrait. So let's open one of the portraits I took for um, testing picture controls. One thing I should say is for these um, preview images, they do have to be NEF images, so raw images. Um, because that then allows the camera to overlay the picture controls on it and process it. You can't import a JPEG. So you will have to shoot a couple of raw images if you want to use this software. So let's take it back to auto and let's start with the portrait, portrait uh, picture control um, as our base image. Now I think we perhaps should calculate the white balance was slightly off on that, yep, very slightly. So let's use calculate automatically. And let's just have a look at what the active D-lighting does. And as you can see, it is mainly the background that the active D-lighting has an impact on. I think we'll leave it at normal um, because that's how I'll set my camera up. Now, what I said, um, earlier is with portraits what you can do you'll see here that the um, the scale for sharpening goes from minus three to plus nine in the Z series and the picture control portrait picture control has it set to two so it gives some sharpening in the face uh, or in the portrait um, and then mid-range sharpening can go from minus five to plus five and they have that set at zero and then clarity again minus five to plus five and they have that set at um, zero again so i actually think for the skin tones if we take this right down and we add and take away the um, changes or we can look at the two images you can see the softness in the skin tones um, is significant when you take the slider right down to minus five. It's probably too far for what I'm uh, looking at doing. And you can adjust these in quarter 0.25 adjustments. So I actually think, uh, let's try a minus one and perhaps let's take the sharpening up a couple of notches. So that the eyes, take that up to three and a half and perhaps let's see what the clarity does if we take the clarity right up. That's too far, but probably clarity 0.5. So I think that is quite a good um, portrait image. It's a bit softer, so when you get the image out of camera, it'll be a little bit softer than perhaps um, it would have been without the picture control. But as I say, with some of the Nikon Z mount lenses being very sharp, it just gives a slightly more flattering skin tones without losing the detail in the hair, the eyes. Um, so I think that for me is a subtle picture control that we could save as my own por portrait. So if I call it Adrian portrait, add it to the list, and again, save it to my memory card. I can then take that out into my camera. So I hope this um, short video on the picture control utility has been useful for you. Perhaps it's opened up something you haven't used before. As I say, I haven't really used the um, picture control utility to software before. And actually this means I might now get into developing some of my own picture controls that I can put in camera for when I am shooting JPEG. I'm always gonna still shoot with RAW and do a lot of this in post-production because it gives me a lot more um, local adjustment capability in Lightroom and Photoshop. So I'm not going to move away from RAW, but this might give me an option for when I am shooting JPEG. I hope you found this uh, video useful. If you did, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell below, and let us know how you're getting on with picture controls. Are you getting finding they're quite useful, or are you still sticking to shooting with RAW? I look forward to seeing you in a future video.